section dedicated to international experience. And uh, it is my pleasure to give the floor to uh, Dejan Vasic from the Center for Cultural Decontamination from Belgrade, Serbia. The floor is yours. <laughs> At the very beginning, I would like to thank to Andri Dostliev for inviting me to speak, and to all of you who are open to discuss and exchange opinions together with me during this conference. It is hard to produce a discourse on the ongoing war atrocities taking place in Ukraine right now. And there are uh, differences between the situation in Yugoslavia in the 1990s and the situation that we are talking about now. By taking it into consideration, I will not address it by speaking about the transfer of experience, but from the uh, position of exchange that I will call uh, and refer to as a difficult knowledge, or the infrastructure and relationship between art and the crime. I will try to speak in a slow pace, since we have a simul simultaneous translation in Ukrainian, and finding proper words can be a challenge and I will address it uh, later on during my talk. Since 2010, I am working on a research on the relationship between war, crime, memory, contemporary art, architecture, and moving images. And when Simon Dab asked me to provide a presentation, I decide, decided not to use any images as a backdrop, and let, later on it would be also clear to you why. Instead, I decided to stand in front of you, and to stand, it makes a take a stance, and the prerequisition for it, it is to have a solid grounding. And how can we speak from the position of stability while we are all living in a present moment as subjects in a free fall? I will try to articulate myself in a discursive way and to talk about Center for Cultural Decontamination where I work as a visual arts curator and from my own artistic and curatorial research experience and how those positions were interconnected in the past and what we are doing in the present moment, not now, but now. The center is non-for-profit cultural institution which is established in 1994, whose work promotes critical discourse, alternative trends in social and cultural policy inclusion, human rights, fundamental freedoms while confronting violence, nationalism, and discrimination. From the immediate context of its uh, foundation, the anti-war movement in Serbia during the 90s, through the transitional histories of the 2000s, CZKD has opened an important diachronical set overview of social challenges and anticipative responses coming from the dynamic field of independent culture and artistic production, critical discourses, public debates gather from local and regional communities, and collective memory and culture of resistance. The first program was on January 1st in 1995 at noon, and it was called the first decontamination. And each new year we are making our birthday exhibition and gathered uh, hundreds of people exactly at noon. One of the first programs that are following was the exhibition Living in Sarajevo, and it took place while Sarajevo was under the siege. Center is a place of arts, political and cultural dialogue, a public space of criticism and affirmation, and by organizing several thousand events, plays, performances, exhibitions, public discussion, film screenings, concerts, workshops, seminars, conferences, lectures, and complex performance experiments. Center missions articulate, stimulates, and supports creative and challenging initiatives, cultural and artistic production, and informal education aim at strengthening civic participation, interaction, and social dialogue in Serbia and beyond while offering a space for critical practice in culture and the arts. The center collects archival material about civil struggle and emancipatory practices in Serbia and former Yugoslavia, and uses its own institutional history 
as a resource and inspiration for new activism. It stimulates the intergenerational transfer of knowledge and investigates new forms for coalition and community building and at public advocacy and collective action. We believe in the visibility of independent cultural, artistic and social action and development. Our vision is an effective forum where individuals, social groups and civil organization means, meets, talk, interact, learn together or with, uh, uh, <clears throat> learn and seek common ground and shared interest in initiate public actions. And they together with the Center for Cultural Decontamination team participate in building sustainable and stable civil inst institutions and democratic culture in Serbia, works on production and communication of knowledge and arts that enhance critical thinking and generate new culture of civic in interaction and social cohesion, supports its own institutional assessments and create new force of forms of engagement in the cha uh, changing context for the new generation of activists, artists and cultural practitioners by reactualization of its archive and intergenerational transfer of knowledge. The main focus of my research, critical writings and curatorial work is art as a critical and political practice. It's an engagement based on the conviction that every act of criticism reshapes the relationship between the production, representation and interpretation of arts, which started with the collective work on memory politics. For five years, I worked on artistic research project with four phases of Omarska working group investigating the war crimes committed in the Bosnian Omarska mining complex. It reflects on the memorial site from the present perspective by making visible the continu continuities and discontinuities of all three epochs and four phases of Omarska. The mining complex of Omarska from the period of socialism, the concentration camp as a site of mass killings and torture for non-Serbian population in 1992, and during the wars, wars of, on the uh, territory of the former Yugoslavia, and its transition to private property of ArcelorMittal, largest steel producing company in the world. The fourth phase was inspired by Pavle Levi's text, Kapo of Omarska, and by using examples of movie, St. George Kills the Dragon, directed by Serbian filmmaker Srđan Dragojević, that was shot on the location of the mining complex and ArcelorMittal orbit designed by artist Anish Kapoor for the occasion of the opening of the Olympic Games in London, partly made of the iron ore for Omarska, we questioned the role of the arts in the policy of perpetuating war crimes by other means. Four phases of Omarska working group explore strategies of memorial production from the position of those whose knowledge and experience has been subjugated and excluded from collective memory and official history. The three epochs and four phases of Omarska are deeply interconnected. They speak about the, about the disintegration of Yugoslavian community, the fall of self-governing socialism, the brutal robbery of social property and the destiny of its citizens in the post-war neoliberal capitalist society. The starting motive and the framework of Four Faces of Omarska Working Group was a critic of the recent cultural production. It explore, explored the following questions. Which policies stand behind cultural and artistic practices and what is the role of cultural and artistic production involved in the revision of the socialist past, as well as the denial of historical events of the 90s that referred to a war crimes. Working group used various forms of exhibiting, public working meetings, reading groups, working gatherings, lecture performances, writing declaration, making film ballet, balleting, and physical exhibiting of our arch archive. The work was developed and creating, created in public space forming a space for politics of solidarity and equality. By adopting the idea of sociality as a standpoint, working group asked the question, is it possible to think a memorial 
from the position of knowledge and experience which is subjugated and excluded from collective memory and official history. Our aim, our aim was to create a memorial in social sculpture media, constituted by the people and their discussions about Omerska site, which through art and artistic practice changed society. We saw it as a platform for the production of knowledge as a process of self-education, auto-reflection, and critical thinking. The public working meetings were the basic political platform of the group, and the first dislocation of the social sculpture outside the place of research, and one of the places that hosted us was Center for Cultural Decontamination. For working group, the public working meetings were basic political strategy and presentation of the ongoing artistic process which defetishizes visual representation as inevitable demand of the visual arts. This iconoclastic approach was triggered by our visit to the Omerska mining complex site. It is important to note that there is no memorial or any sign about the war atrocities done by Serbian army against non-Serbian population in 1992. We started our work in June 2010, and during our visit, we saw a mining complex that operates as any other in the world. However, the only day when survivors of Omerska could visit this site, and this is only for two hours, is, October, is uh, August 6th, on a day when concentration camp was dismissed under the pressure of international institutions. On that day, we saw a community of former Inuits and survivors, and we heard their speech about the atrocities on that very spot. After this, we had our meeting, and all of us were overwhelmed by this experience. And I remember my colleague, Mirjana Dragosavljevic, saying, my head is full of images, and I cannot pick one of them. We decided not to work in image production terms. Instead, we decided to use the politics of bodily presence and to expose ourselves in the process of production of memorial by other means. In 2012, together with survivors and former prisoners of Omerska, Monument Group, which is a counter-monument Yugoslav art and theory collective, Delve, a collective exploring intersection of art politics and academic research, and the Center for Research of Architecture at Goldsmiths University of London, working group reappropriated ArcelorMittal Orbit Tower as Omarska's memorial in exile. Andrew Hersher, whose writing I am recommending you for your further reading, wrote a paper in Ruins Architecture Memory, Counter Memory, making this action of solidarity with subjugated as a horizon for the work in critical theory. Further still, my latest project in Center for Cultural Decontamination is ongoing series of public discussion and exhibitions, Art After a War Crime. And it is initiated in 2019. The starting point of my research is based on Adornian dictum, writing poetry after Auschwitz is barbaric and on the other hand, Agamben's thesis on the potentiality and responsibility of art to articulate speech about the unspeakable. My intention is to address ethical, aesthetical, and political challenges that artists struggle with while, while, while working on politically engaged art that address the question of war atrocities and trauma. The disintegration of Yugoslavia and the wars of the 90s, which led to genocide, ethnic cleansing, and organized prosecution of civilians, created social and political circumstances for the continuous production of the contemporary art as well. That context also operates as a historical frame of reference and is a subject of numerous research and interventions in the fields of art. The starting points are the question of temporality, relation of context, and the moment of emergence of those practices, and their resonance today, as well as the modes in which the condition of production, circulation, 
and existing a new infrastructure determine the discourse in the arts. In this period, many neo avant garde artists transformed their practice, and together with emerging artists of the 1990s and 2000s, were focusing on the relationship between art, politics, and war crime, as well as on monuments and memorials. At the very beginning, we decided to invite everybody who were working on the relationship between war and crime in a debate, and to produce statements in an active voice about their own artistic practice. It is followed by discussion, and we were inviting two to four people who never collaborated before to discuss the same topic from a different perspectives. We also invited four experts in cultural policy who were listening to these panels with the aim of producing a paper that can be used to create cultural policy guidelines that would be eager to foster this kind of knowledge and experience. And they presented their viewpoints on the panel discussion held in December last year, and it is available on our web page for those who are interested. At the beginning of the 1990s, when the paradigm shifted towards what we recognize today under the term contemporary art, and we are all aware of the processes of the 1989 in Europe, there was also a shift to a model of project-based financing that includes expect expectance to fulfill certain aims and requiring various indicators of successfulness that are to be measured. My thesis consists of the claim that contemporary visual art is open to the uncertainty of the outcomes, which thus leaves the very language of art inadequate for this kind of project thinking. That is the reason why there are the usage of terms borrowed from the other disciplines, such as international law, human, human rights, cultural studies, anthropology, forensic, while in the place of the artistic process, the term project and art-based research is introduced during the 1990s in Europe and former Yugoslavia for the art that address social and political problems. What I want to point out is that cultural policy influences not only financing, production, exhibiting, interpretation, and perception, but also to a large extent the very nature of the art artwork as well. Last autumn in Belgrade, a public debate was finally opened about the place, function, and the role, role, role of the images in public space. The image crisis was, was caused by a memorial drawing referred to as the mural to Ratko Mladic, so-called butcher from the Balkans, former military general and convicted war criminal in the city center of Belgrade. This triggered public division for people to decide whether they are for or against the mural. Timely together with my colleagues in the center and the artists and cultural workers, I, in I initiated a discussion claiming it is not a mural. With this claim, we politicized a seemingly neutral technical term. The following step was organizing the exhibition, This is Mural, and I invited six artists and three artistic groups to collectively paint murals in Center for Cultural Decontamination. We intended to open the question of the scope and limitation, as well as the potential of the representation in the urban landscape and its symbolic capitalization by different political narrative. Tzuzukad has vast experience in dealing with topics of war and trauma. And when the new phase of the Russian war against Ukraine started, we didn't wait for invitation. Rather, we came in touch with our partner organization from Ukraine, artists, activists, act academics, filmmakers, and curators, and we contacted them with the aim to organize public programs together or simply share our knowledge and experience. In June 2022, we have organized the first public program in Serbia as a support for cultural workers and peoples in Ukraine during the war in a form of the round table four months of this war together with Diana Berg from Art, Art Platform 2 from Mariupol Ihor Savchak from Center for Cultural Management in Lviv, 
Vlad Arsenievich, writer from Belgrade, and Aleksandra Niksha from BBC in Serbian. Furthermore, together with our partners, Katarzyna Kozira Foundation from Warsaw and Arts with Gallery from Ukraine, among others, we participated within secondary archive project in Manifesta 14 in Pristina, where 160 female artists from nine countries, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Belarus, Kosovo, Albania, and Serbia, together with 14 artists from Ukraine, together produced one new unique sound piece for this exhibition. The start of our work was in January this year, and it coincided with the start of a new scale, uh, full-scale uh, invasion uh, for, uh, for the year's ongoing war of Russia against Ukraine. We managed to open a space for Ukrainian artists to address the ongoing war atrocities and destruction, and after Manifesta, we are organizing the exhibition in Center for Cultural Decontamination in the end of December of this year, and it would be on a display for our birthday uh, exhibition on January 1st at noon. While we were in Manifesta, I asked Asia uh, Cisar, a curator from Ukraine, what she needs now, and she answered, I need time for myself. Starting from it, we conceptualized a residency and research project, Medi Medic, Mediating Difficult Knowledge, and coming from the anti-war movement background, the Center for Cultural Dec Decontamination during the last 28 years with various projects can be that are uh, implemented in various paradigm, paradigms ranging from transitional justice, reconciliation, human rights, art and activism, politics and culture of memory, and forensic aesthetics, we are often in, uh, anticipating in the changes of our discourse. The project MEDIC, which is grounded in our archive and experience, will activate remembers of the experience of war in Yugoslavia and the means of addressing topics of war and trauma, solidarity and empathy in order to share our knowledge as well as to learn together with cultural workers from Ukraine. At this point, we have two residents, Asia Cisar and Anastasia Hreshkina, and Diana Berg will join us in December this year. It should not be left unmentioned that many of the artworks of artists from former Yugoslavia that are addressing war atrocities as masterpieces in their, their media are part of the major contemporary art museums collections worldwide. For years, these artworks were forgotten in the museum's depot. And since February this year, they are again on the exhibition displays all over the Europe. Today, 30 years after the start of the war in former Yugoslavia, we still don't have a common name for these wars. And on international as well as on national levels, juridical processes have failed to produce justice that would satisfy survivors and families of the victims. Histories are in disputes, and the artworks that are addressing war crimes have, don't have a place in history of arts. And what I'm arguing for today is a production of perpetual, never to be resolved debate about the potentiality of art in addressing war crimes and atrocities as a collective action which is based in solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Dian, and uh, I would like to give the floor uh, virtually to our next speaker, who is Tamar uh, from Georgia, to share a uh, Georgian experience, which is also very relevant to Ukrainian situation. Tamar, the mic is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tamar Janash, and I'm representing East organization cultural management lab. Um, I don't know if you hear me well because I hear myself. Um, okay. 
So um, thanks, first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me for this very interesting and um, foremost, very important meeting. So, um, yeah, because we in Georgia, we have to deal with, uh, uh, with the conflict since the dissolved um, Soviet Union, uh, because we have um, different conflicts on national level, um, several civil wars within Georgia, but are also affected uh, by the regional conflicts, for example, in Armenia and Azerbaijan, which has a huge impact on us. And since recently also Ukraine, because we are very much involved in this conflict. We consider ourselves to be involved in this conflict as well. Um, so um, this conflict started from the 90s and still are continuing with the most recent one in 2008, which took place in Gori. Uh, on the um, closer to the Russian border uh, with South Ossetia, and it was like a frozen conflict which was ongoing also since 90s, but this time it got really very aggravated, leaving us with the Russian uh, army standing uh, on our territory, despite the fact that there were some agreements to uh, for them to take status quo, etc. Uh, of course, we cannot really compare it with the uh, scale uh, and the duration of uh, conflict with Russia in Ukraine, because this war, um, according to uh, most of the estimation, it's, um, it uh, lasted only five days, uh, and it was curbed in five days, uh, but officially it is said that it started on the 1st of August and ended on the 12th. Though we are still dealing with uh, with the consequences uh, because uh, some of the people are left without their homes. Uh, at the beginning, these were uh, about 192,000 internally displaced uh, persons who immediately left the territories but gradually went back. And at the moment, there are about 20,000 persons who are uh, left without houses and they were uh, provided uh, quick housing by the governments, international organizations, etc. But they are still considered to be refugees. So this was actually the war that was pretty much announced and everyone knew that it would happen. Um, the Russian military expert, Fellingauer, he predicted that it would start in August uh, in Georgia and in South Ossetia. Uh, and it was pretty much exact because he said, uh, he mentioned August and also Alexander Dugin, uh, he said that this would be the only way to uh, prevent Georgia from its NATO uh, membership and NATO aspirations, the same thing as uh, Ukraine is striving for. And he stated that South Ossetia's independence uh, would block Georgia's NATO membership and that uh, there would military operation carried out until uh, December. Um, so um, despite the fact that everyone was expecting this war and somehow this war also ended, uh, let's say, pretty quickly, uh, there are still um, artistic projects going on about this uh, uh, fact, reflecting on how it is, but still it is a very, very difficult situation, uh, not only because, um, of course, everyone in Georgia considers Russia occupant in this case, but uh, with the region, there is another problem. This is the birthplace of Stalin, and still this um, uh, emotional dependence on the on the image of Stalin as a really very strong person, strong historical person is still present there, which which is like an absolute cognitive dissonance because this place has been bombed by the Russians during the war. But still, these people have who live there have their emotional connection with Stalin and they somehow say that he's not he was not a bad person at all. So um, it was <clears throat> it happened in 2010 only that the huge six meters Stalin monument was removed from the central street of Gori. It was still there until June 2010, and the population was against it. So the government had to remove it at three o'clock at night so that people didn't know about that, and there would be no... Um, no demonstration or something. They are still demanding it to be brought back. And this is really an interesting factor because um, not only the war, but the Soviet past is still haunting these people. And this is a very, very huge problem that needs rethinking and somehow 
uh, rebuilding the whole structure of the mentality. I would um, name one uh, one example. Uh, now in uh, November, my organization, which works in the field of the uh, of the contemporary um, culture, uh, we initiated a project about rebranding the Gori because the Stalin Museum there is one of the uh, not one of the, it is uh, the biggest money generator of all museums in Georgia. This is the only museum that doesn't really need any public funding, though it works under the Ministry of uh, Culture and it is still under the umbrella of the state authorities uh, because it generates so much money that it is pretty commercial and it doesn't really need any external money. Uh, and everyone who comes to Georgia wants to go and visit this museum. Uh, which on one turn, from the one side, it's really a shame, but uh, people don't really realize it. And Gori is really well known for a lot of historical interesting sites, which are like uh, the second millennia before Christ, etc., etc. It has a very good ethnographic museum. So we decided to initiate a project um, uh, because there is a big need for, especially from the younger generation, somehow to rethink uh, all this uh, Soviet heritage. Uh, and uh, there were uh, several interventions made. Uh, in, so this was a joint project by the Free University students from Tbilisi and also the Gori Photo Club, which is a, um, which is a local initiative and they work a lot on promotion of the people from Gori who were really interesting, really famous, did a lot of artistic works, but are uh, somehow in the shadow of Stalin all the time. Uh, and uh, there were um, different workshops organized there, uh, also the comic workshop where they produced, for example, the new images of a new images of Gori, and they made a comic book uh, about the new you know, history of Gori because it cannot really concentrate on the same things over and over. Uh, and Gori is also um, mentioned um, related to another project by a very good Georgian photographer, Tak Orobakidze. I wanted to show a very short video that she made because the occupation happens not only on the level of the mental level with these people, but it also happens in Georgia now on a daily basis. Because after 2008, uh, when the treaty was signed about stopping the war, Russians are still moving the borders. So we call it the creeping occupation because the border is moved uh, our side every day, basically every day. Uh, and, uh, for example, it is really funny to say that, but you can go to sleep on one side of the border and suddenly in the morning you find out that you are already on the other side because the Russian army, they are telling the people, okay, you can dismantle your brick house and take it with you, but in 20, you have 24 hours to get out of this territory. And we cannot really do anything about that because the international community is silent, so we are not capable to start a war because, you know, Gori is like 60 kilometers. Georgia is teeny. It's really super, super small. Uh, so they, they, if we start the war, we will be like non-existent this in just two hours, I think. Uh, so um, I would ask Anna uh, to switch maybe the video link, uh, which tells a story by Tak Orobakidze, who spent um, really a lot of time researching these creeping borders and creeping occupations. So uh, this is one of the interesting cases of using a narrative by a Tbilisi-based artist who actually is not really related to this region at all, uh, who uh, goes there and may, uh, initiates a project that lasts for more than one year just to show how the situation changes for the local uh, for the local uh, local um, population. So please let's see this video for just a minute or so and then continue with the other cases. Ben de o sepçü kayı 
توصیه تو با کندا خیلی دقم بیاد تو با این کنه بودا کورتی لیه بیکنم تو دراتی با سویر تا توی قویده آره ای تاری خامد بیرو گل دکو ترکنی هن ایسی نیه خامد چونت بیرو گل دکو ترکنی هن چاخلی فیان شم بوینه روشه بید تا گرینه بایگه سوارا سیباریاری کوی مزه آخه چه موردی که دیگه کمی چه ویدن مسخره بسیت از سبین خال خبرگاه سولا سام شاوت از زبرگاه دیگرات قلی مایی پانو یکاز گشینی اخسا گمتی برگای ولی این طور داغی چرند داغی باوی جاری میبی زندی جاری میبی یه مزه توی تو روسی بی باوی تر وای بی نفشن تو باشی رو آخر وار میمیده خیلی شم و تریالی، یکی دکن میدیو دار، مگر سازگاری کن. دار خوبه به تو اورا سیمتری ساکت هست، شم وی دنیت دار. بگر موساری گفته بود، تامیزی ره توی اسرائیل. نمیشه اگه تبدیل رو دایی کردن، ایو قوانین کردن، ای کدایوگه من سوال تپس. Ու տեմ այս են դեղ կետանավում ու կանետ ու շույմ միսատ ամեն ամաս հանսվարի դա արգույա։ Դամ դեզին է վիլ է պարակոտրով չում սատովար արդավորդավիա իմ չեն արդաղ ու ջերի։ Ու ջերի բեմ շույն իմ ատի։ Հայ Հայցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցցց
though compared to the Ukrainian uh, conflict, it is, which is a tragedy on a global um, scale, of course, it is much, much smaller, but still it is one of the ways how we can deal with the conflict on an artistic way uh, and somehow create the narratives in order to understand what these people, under which conditions they are really living and what they have to deal with on a daily basis. Because for us, the Georgians who leave the cities, despite the fact that these territories are about 50 kilometers away from us, we still don't see what is in reality going on there uh, on a daily basis. And this is uh, very important uh, also from the Ukrainian perspective, because now when the war, um, I don't want to use this word and diminish somehow, but it has become a routine. Uh, and people are maybe not following it on a daily basis like they used to. This is really the moment that we don't don't uh, can't miss uh, because there are so many stories to be told. Um, and uh, for example, it, one of the ways is also uh, involving um, international groups of artists. For example, not far from the Gori region, there is a project that is ongoing in the Nikosi village, which is divided now in two parts because one one of the parts is controlled by Russia and another one is uh, on the Georgian territory. Uh, there is uh, every year um, a Zurich um, uh, Academy of Arts. Uh, they are initiating an intervention when they bring the students from the Zurich University together with the Georgian students there who live there for two weeks and they start working on their artistic projects, which is also very interesting. And it, I, I should mention that it is also quite shocking for the Georgian uh, students because they never had to live in these conditions and they had to uh, deal with these kind of people on such a um, on such a short distance. So these are uh, maybe two projects that I need to mention. Uh, one that takes place in Nikosi and another one that was organized in the IDP settlement that was uh, built not far from Gori where these people, uh, not 20,000 at the same uh, place, they are scattered through different villages, but they were special villages built for them. And uh, there are also a lot of people among them who are artists, who have their artistic ambitions and they have no chance to uh, to exercise them. Uh, so I think in terms of uh, Ukraine, how it should be re rebuilt or at least uh, head towards rebuilding of its culture, maybe one of the options would be not to rebuild it only on the territory of Ukraine, but also on the other territories, because there are now so many Ukrainians in different countries, also in Georgia. We have a huge influx of uh, refugees from Ukraine, but also uh, another uh, influx from Russia and Belarus. So now these three groups are all mixed up uh, in, certain, um, in certain aspects. They are also helping each other um, in some cases. In some cases, they are pretty isolated, but we know more about the Ukrainian, um, Ukrainian um, uh, groups who live in Georgia uh, rather than Russian and or Belarusian because they are keeping a more low, low profile and the solidarity towards Ukrainian refugees in Georgia is really very high. So at the very beginning of the war, there were uh, 13 private galleries which decided to organize a um, solidarity act and solidarity exhibition and they uh, initiated a cultural week. Uh, end of May, when they exhibited the works of Ukrainian artists that were created exactly after the start of the war. Uh, and uh, this is how they try to promote this issue even more about the population, which is already very supportive. We have um, different cultural events going on in support of Ukrainians, but also with participation of Ukrainians who are in Georgia. And I think this uh, this decentralized model would be one of the uh, maybe best solutions, at least at the very beginning, to deal with it. Uh, at the moment, I also work for the Tbilisi Architecture Biennial, which uh, could be maybe a good case for that, because we are the core group of four people, but one of them lives in Berlin. Uh, and so we work um, very much on 
uh, very much online. And that could be also an option for the Ukrainian uh, artists. And I think they are already using this kind of opportunities to work online with each other. Uh, because we also have the partners, uh, partner organization from Ukraine, from Ivano Frankivsk, and uh, we create uh, the, created their pavilion in Tbilisi. This uh, year, we were very appreciative of the fact that they even traveled to Georgia, which is like something absolutely crazy in my eyes to go 18 hours from Ivano Frankivsk to Warsaw, and then to fly to, from Warsaw to Tbilisi to create a installation and Ukrainian pavilion during the biennial to come here only for four days. This is really something incredible that we appreciate a lot. So um, I think that um, Ukraine um, will definitely win this war, but it will also win this war, which is our war as well, uh, because rebuilding Ukrainian culture, I don't think it will be possible without support uh, from outside. But this is also a big support for us uh, to get richer in terms of culture, to get uh, more advanced in, uh, in terms of humanity. Uh, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, please just feel free to ask them. I will be happy to answer them. Uh, thank you, Tamara, for sharing your um, your experience and your thoughts. So we will have a small Q and A session after the third presentation. So please prepare your questions for it. And uh, now I would like to invite here Nian Ting Chen from Taiwan to share her experience and experience of Taiwan with us. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's my pleasure to stand in here to talk about my experience. And I come from Taiwan. And I'm not sure does everyone know about Taiwan or about Taiwanese situation. Possibly, to be honest, because of the Ukrainian war, after that, Taiwan became the, the, the second topic about the situation of the war. Yeah, and before I start my presentation, I want to share my my yesterday, his um, experience. Yesterday, I arrived in um, Mobiling Airport. Yeah, and I just like need to take a queue to pass the, the customer gate. And at that moment, the, the staff asked me like, oh, where are you from? I say Taiwan. And I don't know why, but the, the staff just maybe saw me because of the Asia face, just, oh, China. I, I'm surprised because I say Taiwan, but the way, I don't know why the, the, the person listen become China. So I just like uh, kindly uh, adjust. He said, "Oh, I'm Taiwan. I'm from Taiwan." I said, "Oh, sorry. I, I'm I'm apologize. Yeah, I think I don't feel rude to be honest because it's common experience for Taiwanese people. Yeah, and uh, in other case, is some sometimes if I say I'm from Taiwan, I'm Taiwanese. Some people say, oh, Thailand. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm not rude for, for Thai people, but I just feel like uh, what happened? Taiwan and Thailand, possibly the pronunciation is similar, but uh, please pay attention. I say Taiwan. Yeah, and so like uh, this kind of experience for many Taiwanese people, we, be, we feel weird, but it's become common. Yeah, so... So that's why I think the Taiwanese people, we very, very want to share about Taiwanese situation or Taiwanese perspective to the overseas people about like uh, what we are. Yeah, so now I will officially start my presentation for today. Yeah, and actually today uh, I will share my, my exchange program with Ukraine and Taiwan, and this, pro, this exchange program is start from the 2021 until now, and it's mean actually 
it's like before the world, we already started this project. Yeah, but the, during the world, we changed the some, some project and more folks about like a, doing the world. Um, those overseas people, how can we support Ukraine? And also, like a Taiwanese situation, possibly we are the next. Yeah, in Taiwan, we have a slogan say, today's Ukraine is tomorrow's Taiwan. Yeah, and this situation is, is both unfair for both countries' people. What happened? Yeah, why we need to face this unfair situation in the world? Yeah, so now I will, I will so from this uh, art exchange program to, to share like a, be an artistic pe people, how can I do for face this situation? Yeah, but to be honest, I, I'm not a political person. I'm not a, a big man big woman, so how can I do? For a nobody or artistic person, how can I do? Yeah, okay. Uh, and this presentation, and also this, this PowerPoint, actually is not, not, originally is not for today's presentation. It's the issue, and I publish in Chinese world to Taiwanese people to know about the, the Taiwan and Ukraine, our exchange program in recently. Yeah, and the, the list exhibition and the exchange program originally is from the 2019. I meet the Ukrainian curators and the artists in Taiwan. At that moment, Taiwanese government invited some of uh, Ukrainian uh, alternative art space and artists have an exhibition in Taiwan. So it's my first time to meet Ukrainian artists in Taiwan, and at that, that moment, we make a good connection. So after that, one day, I got an invite later from Ukraine curator to invite me be a, a participate curator, have the um, media art festival in Kharkiv. So it's like a, my, my personally uh, cooperation with Ukrainian artists start from that moment, yeah, until now. And I believe it will have a long-term relationship in the future. Yeah, and because unfortunately, because of the uh, um, coronavirus, dynamic, and also now Ukrainian war. So uh -huh. this, ex this exchange program will change be online exhibition. And we still did a lot of automatizing promotion event on, in the internet and the physical event. Yeah, so we made the website for the exhibition, the social media exhibition, and you can see the, the photo. It's our website. When you go in to see the website, you will see the, the, the world. They have the four worlds, and each world has a different function, but the lost, lost those function is connected with the recently Ukraine unfair situation. Yeah, and the how Ukrainian artists and the Taiwanese artists, how so from their artwork, media art, to present the situation. And those video actually is not, not after the world they met it, it's before the world. So it means still have some of artists, they're very uh, sensitive. So like they feel like uh, in the some weird situation or personal artist experience, they feel like a uh, possibly have the unstable condition in, in the past. Of course, before the war, some people feel something weird. So the artist is very sensitive. So they made art to talk about the, the public people. Maybe we should rethink more about the situation. Yeah, so we collect those video to this exhibition to show to artists and also public people say, yeah, actually, it's, it's, not just, it's not just the, the after the war. Everything was happened before. They have uh, some phenomenon. So we should, we should more careful. Yeah, so those is the Taiwan and Ukrainian artists, their video. And after this presentation, I will show you the website and the QR code. So people, if interested, you can just scan it. Yeah, and for... For the artist part land, we also make a different function. So this function is hand in hand. And this function is we invite among the world's artistic organization, even artists, to support Ukrainian art. 
and also artists. So we invite, for example, like a, a Taiwan National Museum or Kaohsiung Fire Museum's uh, organization to, to make their sentence and in public to see like uh, Ukrainian artists, you are not alone. We all stand with you. Even we couldn't do anything, but if, at least for the mental, we still support it. And we follow every detail in the news. Yeah. And actually last year, oh, it's the last year, the, the same day, I was in Kiev. Yeah, because at that moment, we, we are preparing for a physical exhibition in Kiev and Dnipro. Yeah, so you can see the, the photo. Actually, at that moment, I, I visited the Pincher Art Center, uh, Mr. Ski, and the um, Art uh, National Fine Art Museum of Ukraine. Yeah, we meet the, the curator and artist to, to talk about how can we cooperate in Taiwan and Ukraine. Yeah, so uh, every week, every week, we have an online meeting with the Ukrainian artists, Ukrainian cur uh, curator, and also executive team to talk about how to build this exhibition. Yeah. And after, after this online exhibition, we open it. We also do a physical promotion in the world. So for, for example, this photo, uh, this photo is I took from the UK in Liverpool. Yeah, so I was invited to have a seminar in Liverpool for the Liverpool University's uh, professor and te teacher to talk about like how can we do. Yeah, and they have an other event. It's like uh, mm, in in right side upset. Is the we I was invited in Singapore to have the the seminar and the speech to talk about like our, our online exhibition with Ukraine and Taiwan. Yeah, and um, also uh, this summer I went to Documenta. I, I was not invited in that event, but I do my best. So I went to there to, to, to promote our online exhibition, to, to make sure more people to understand like uh, even, even I was not invite artist, but I can do something in there. Yeah, do my best and meet other people to introduce myself also for the Ukraine situation. Yeah, and after this online exhibition and the exchange program, I got a very good feedback, and this feedback will keep us to keep going and have a more cooperation. So uh, after online exhibition, um, our Ukraine curator and the artist was invited to have an exhibition in Taiwan, in Taipei, to, to show about, to show for the Taiwanese people about why is Ukrainian artist, contemporary artist. Uh, and here we also, in this year, we also invite the three Ukrainian artists to doing residency in Taiwan. Yeah, and also we, we have uh, our government invited the Ukrainian uh, book book company to to like a make make a, make a, we we try to publish more about Ukrainian history, Ukrainian writers' books to in Taiwan to understand. We want to learn and we want to know about Ukrainian. Yeah, and also it's very tricky. I, I'm not sure the I say is 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 good or not. But actually, we also host the refugee Russia artists. They have the two Russia artists. They against their government because of the war. They want to stand with Ukraine, but so they they was crushed by their government. And at that moment, because they 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 are Russian nationality, so. No people, like at that moment, like because maybe that situation, people had Russia, so so no no other country organizations support land, so so we heard about this, so we also open the residency opportunity for land to come to Taiwan. Yeah, so it, it's it's tricky, but uh, we I think be Taiwanese, we we do our best because. 
we not sh it's it's difficult to to judge for one or two person in this situation. Yeah, so let, let's come back to the website exchange program. So after this exhibition, online exhibition published, and we got a lot of public people's feedback. And this feedback is written in different language, like a Chinese language, English, and Korean, Japanese. Yeah, even some language, to be honest, without Google Translate, I don't, I, 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 I can't read. Yeah, so we get a lot of feedback from the professional artist organization, also the normal ordinary people. Yeah, and also this exchange program also get a lot of like a social media or press to promote it. So even even just in Taiwan, we get the ten news newspapers interview and also promote. Yeah, also we got a, like a. Uh, South Korea, Japanese, and also BBC Indonesia's news to promote this exhibition. Yeah, I think Asia, recently for Ukrainian people, think it's like a quite far. Yeah, but uh, actually, everyone follow it, follow this situation, and we just want to say, Ukraine, you are not alone, and we always. Even we couldn't do anything, but we still follow it and give us the chance. If we have any opportunity, we will stand up together. Yeah, so after, uh, after this whole exchange program, we also have like a some writer or like a journalist to, to have interview about this whole program to keep this cooperation can keep going and have a different way to recording. Yeah, and then now is the, the information for the whole exchange program, what we achievement. So like, uh, for example, our ex exhibition trailer uh, we, we have like a 9,000 uh, watcher. And also like uh, we have the 15,000 hotspot, the people uh, share their information uh, so from Instagram or Facebook. Yeah, and also over 20 museum galleries to share this information. Yeah, and uh, all of, all of, um, all of the people watch this online website over certain countries to follow it. Yeah, so I think I think it's just like a not not we, we are not a, like the government met or national levels exhibition or exchange program, but how can we do the best in the emergency situation to change our our plan at the same time to do our best. And this is our um, QR code, can connect to the website to see the whole exhibition in online. Yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you, Nianting. Uh, let me just make a small comment and uh, remind that based on the general common feedback from Ukrainian Cultural Society, we ask to stop any collaborations with Russian artists and we consider any attempt of reconciliation inappropriate, at least at the moment while the active phase of war is uh, happening right now and uh, Ukrainian cultural heritage and artists are on the physical danger because of the shillings and bombing uh, from Russia. But I would suggest not to focus uh, on this topic at the moment, but rather focus on the um, main topic of this conference and uh, what is important for us is to gain this international experience uh, from our partners who um, are aware of what is happening in Ukraine and have, um, I would not say similar, but uh, to some point also challenging experience of uh, 
doing culture uh, in their regions. So I would like to ask uh, Diane and Yen Ting to join me here. Uh, and Tamar is uh, with us online. Um, please have a seat. And um, if uh, you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to assist you with that. If not, does anyone have a question? Okay, we have we have first one here. Can someone help me with the mic? Uh, well, I, I want to thank to all the, the speakers for today's presentations, and uh, my comment and question will be addressed to Nintin. Hi. <laughs> uh, a year ago, when Nintin was in Kiev. Uh, we had an interview during her stay there. Uh, and I remember that we discussed uh, together with the exhibition also the situation of relationships between Ukraine and Taiwan, and that we have these cultural communications, but there are a lot of issues on diplomatic level, and you had some problems with entering Ukraine. And uh, after a year and in this new situation, uh, do you see any changes in this direction, in this field? Thank you. Yes. Um, I just quickly to explain the Taiwan and China situation for uh, the, uh, the today's audience. Um, Taiwan, Taiwanese people, we think we are the individual country, and also we, we, we. We have the same race and the mother culture from China, Chinese culture. It's the true, it's the fact. But uh, after Second World War, we, 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 we was colonized by Japanese government after Second World War. And we just changed the government and become democratization. Yeah, so it's. It's our history, national history, but for Chinese Beijing government, they still think uh, we belong to them. And because they are big and Taiwan just like a tiny island. So when China or Chinese government become powerful and the influence in the world, uh, to be honest, I would say bullying. I think Taiwanese situation is like bullying. So, um, for example, like uh, when we go to airport, we see the, the flight timetable. You, you, you wouldn't see like, oh, if you want to go to the, the Taipei, the capital city in Taiwan, you will see Taipei Chinese or Taipei China. So it's, it's, it's make the, the foreigner very confused. I say, oh, it, it's China or Chinese. And you know, it's unfair situation, but because Chinese or Chinese company is very powerful and rich, so they can like uh, indicate the airport or like a like a flight flight airline company to to change the name. It, it sounds very weird, right? It's un, unfair, but it's happened. And this situation is like a three years before it already happened and become common. Yeah, so. So Natalia asked me the question, like uh, this year or recent year, does it have any change? I would say, yes, it's always change. And this change is not just like a, like suddenly. And it's like a very, very slowly, but, uh, but uh, become powerfully. Yeah, but if you ask me like, uh, oh, do they do any like a uh, directly attack? I would say no. But every day, every day, every week, they're, they're me, I'm not sure ex exactly English, but like, a, like a, the, the fry, the military fry, fry to Taiwanese border, Taiwanese islands border. And uh, they didn't attack us, but they just annoy us. Yeah, so how can I say it? The, the situation is, is very difficult and even, I'm the Taiwanese, but I couldn't represent all of Taiwanese people. Still have some, some of Taiwanese people, they 
they love China or they earn money from China. So they cross with Chinese government. So, yeah. We have one more question from Gion Taltas. I would like to ask uh, Diane. Uh, thank you for your uh, excellent uh, uh, and large presentation. And uh, I'm working as well in the field of critical theory, uh, but I'm not artist, I'm philosopher. Uh, in a way, I did researches about some concentration camps. And you mentioned uh, Adorno and his quote on Auschwitz. And uh, my question is, you know, that uh, in our researches we try to separate the case of uh, Nazi concentration camps or symbol Auschwitz, Gulagian uh, concentration camps, uh, for example, uh, Kolyma and Vorkuta. Then uh, uh, we found that there are very big differences between them. Uh, some, the Auschwitzian case is related to autonomism or individualism too much, and Gulagian is very collective, uh, collectivistic. Then we uh, uh, did researches about Goliotok, you know, in uh, uh, former Yugoslavia, the, in the period of Brostito. And then you mentioned about uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, you know, and these concentration camps. And I didn't research on these uh, camps and, uh, and couldn't identify them. But uh, could you just comment about the differences at least between Auschwitz and, uh, you know, and concentration camps Bosnia-Herzegovina from your artistic or rather critical theory point of view? What was the differences between them? What some, to, to explain a little bit, you know, how these people presented themselves in which one way that's ideology and so on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, speaking of differences, first uh, there is uh, this uh, difference in, in um, temporality of uh, uh, those two uh, concentration camps. When we are speaking about Auschwitz, we are speaking about uh, World War II. And when we are speaking about Omerska, we are speaking about 1992. Uh, I mean, the difference is really huge, and I could not see the links uh, between two of the concentration camp camps in, in one part, yes, because we are speaking about dead camps. It is not just some prison. It is a dead camp where people are systematically tortured and killed. And while I was uh, speaking about uh, uh, Adorno, I was speaking about dictum of Adorno. I was not giving any cross links uh, uh, between uh, uh, Holocaust and genocide in Bosnia. So if you would like maybe to discuss it uh, later on, we could continue. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We have we have a question from Mihailo. Um. Thank you. Um, good question, also connected to this topic. Uh, I represent organization that used to be a cultural center on the territory of the factory that was turned into a concentration camp. Um, and now we see that a lot of places like this are being unraveled all around the occupied territories in Kherson and everywhere, concentration camps, concentration camps, and so on. Uh, do you know if there is any research going on about this right now already? Is there any uh, works that have been published or something like this? Especially because Izalaza had been there already for eight years, so maybe there is something that um, could be also connected with that. I didn't quite get this uh, question, uh, uh, the last part. Uh, question is, do you know uh, about publications or research uh, about this topic um, worldwide? And if you um, have been doing research about this as well, it's also interesting. Uh, there are actually a lot of uh, uh, researchers and also uh, um, articles uh, uh, written uh, uh, in 
various different uh, discourses about it. So uh, it depends from the point of view, but uh, you have the whole body of the knowledge about uh, uh, Holocaust and uh, how actually to think about those places from the perspective of the memorial. And then you have also uh, a different kind of um, uh, uh, theories that are arguing for those places not just to be a place of memorializing through the objects, but also the places uh, for production of the knowledge. And we can also speak later on about, really systematically about uh, all these uh, uh, books and articles that I could recommend to you. Thank you. Thank you. I want, uh, I want to ask Tamara, um, maybe someone can help me translate in English? I will, just ask in Ukrainian and I will translate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask, because I think that uh, talks about the occupation of Georgia's are going on to hear where and in what way these talks are going on. I mean, where these talks are taking place, things. Тепер це питання перекладається на українську мову. Розмови про деокупацію ведуться, щоб повернутися до статусу. And um, you know very well how European systems work. They support you, but on the one hand, it's just with they are concerned. When they write that they are very concerned, it means that something really horrible is happening. But usually nothing really happens for us after that. And we are in the same situation. As I said, this project, for example, with <laughs> gripping occupation, it was made not uh, in 2008, but much, much uh, later than that. And this is an ongoing process that we cannot really stop. So every time it happens, there is a resolution. Oi, 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 this is really bad. But this is the reality that we have to deal with. And one thing I would say that there is, of course, the physical deoccupation. And there is another thing which is like a mental deoccupation that we really, I think, need to work even harder because there are the people here in Georgia, especially in the recent times, who say that, okay, maybe um, we need to build some kind of relationships with Russia. Maybe we need to behave in another way. So you don't, uh, this, this is like completely the situation of a victim of a domestic violence. So if, you, if I behaved well, then they would not beat me, maybe. But um, at the moment, I wouldn't say that anything serious is going on in terms of the occupation. And I don't really think that anything serious will be going on uh, in the future, in the nearest future, because um, I, I should really say that we all, it, these are not pure words, we all are very much dependent on what happens in Ukraine, because Ukraine is the future of Europe. I am absolutely sure Ukraine will sooner or later win, and it has to win because this kind of evil, evil cannot really survive. But uh, I also hope that Europe understands it better, how much they depend from Ukraine, which is a buffer zone for them at the moment. And there are people killed there and they are dying every day in order to protect them. And they should do a little bit more for that. I mean, not Ukrainians. Ukrainians, they do whatever they can. I, I don't think they can do e even more, but the Europeans or the rest of the world. 
So the occupation in Georgia, this is just the mere words at the moment. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Anna. Uh, thank you. I have a question about uh, these connections with uh, people who left the countries, your countries, uh, in different period of times uh, of war or um, in uh, um, thinking that war could happen. And uh, the question is, uh, do you have a connection with them? Do you uh, feel this internal request uh, inside of the country to be connected? And how do you see uh, people uh, abroad, uh, Georgian people, Serbian people, Taiwan people, uh, could uh, um, uh, raise uh, this awareness about what is going on and what uh, need to do uh, f in, in, in other countries where it is a space let's say, a uh, uh, safe place uh, to, to talk about this. Um, Tamara, would you like to start then? If oh, yes, yes, I can start with that. Uh, so, you know, when the Rose Revolution happened in 2003, this was really the moment when a lot of young people who stayed abroad for years came back because the hope that something new would happen and they would find their way to contribute to really the uh, re-establishment and rebuilding of the country was huge. Uh, unfortunately, with the newer government, which has, um, uh, I mean, officially they are very pro-Western, but um, sometimes they are doing the things which are really very pro-Russian, I would say. So now the situation is the following, that a lot of young people are frustrating, uh, they want to leave, they want to go to the other countries to find some future somewhere else. Uh, what um, is the good um, trend, though, is that even when they, um, even if they go and when they go to the foreign countries, they still keep in touch. For example, with Goethe Institute, we initiated a very good project in 2011, I think. It was called the Reverse Brain Drain where uh, the Georgian artists uh, and art um, agents who lived abroad for, for ages and never came back were invited to conduct the workshops at um, specific um, educational institutions. And some of them, that this was really a turning point for them. Uh, at least two or three of the 10 people they relocated to Georgia and started to um, create here. So there are a lot of um, people going back and forth. Uh, now it is really easy, and um, especially with uh, COVID, because everyone was stuck at home, it didn't really matter where you are. So, for example, with the architectural biennial, we had a very good opportunity to recruit the people from abroad also, so because everything was happening online. So we are doing our best somehow to recruit these people, not to lose this intellectual, to prevent the intellectual brain drain. And the contacts are growing um, stronger and stronger. And this is what I'm saying, actually, that this could be also one of the solutions for Ukraine, that it is really important to build this web of network, because at the moment, everyone can work from their uh, home. Of course, the physical contact is something absolutely different. But still, under the circumstances, this is one of the solutions. Thank you. Yeah, the pandemia taught us how to stay connected online, but Thank at the you. same time, it's very important. Um, <coughs> and this event is uh, one more way to prove that being physically in one space is also very important to be integrated. Uh, Diane, would you like to also answer the question? Well, there are actually different uh, reasons why people are leaving and why they are migrating from one hand. We can speak about economical uh, migration. We can speak about uh, political reasons for leaving. And also, it is all also important to note that sometimes people just cannot bear it. And uh, uh, there, are, there were migrations in uh, Yugoslavia during the war times, but also after the 2000s, uh, as well. And from the artistic point of view, uh, some of the artists were working on this uh, question of migration. Uh, but uh, also what is important to speak about it is also the ways how people who, who left 
are still connected with the local scene and how they are actually producing the knowledge about it. And I could also recommend you to, if uh, you would like to read about uh, uh, Moving Images, a uh, book of Pavle Levy, who is professor at uh, Stanford. He wrote a book, Disintegration in Frames. He actually spoke about, actually <laughs> writing about uh, uh, disintegration of Yugoslavia, but from the point of view of moving images, and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, what I would uh, like to say, it is also when you are leaving, you also cannot come back that easily. And especially we have to bear in mind that when the war started, the public institutions in Serbia, because Serbia was the perpetrator state, Serbia was not a victim in those wars, uh, actually all public institutions had to follow uh, the politics of the states. And all people who were uh, working in those institutions had actually to make political choice whether they are going to stay on their jobs in uh, official state institutions or they would leave. And people who left were also founders of Center for Cultural Decontamination. For example, Borka Pavicevic was theater director and he left in 1992. Uh, uh, then uh, also um, I would uh, mention Mirjana Miucinovic, who was professor of uh, Yugoslav drama in Academy of Fine Arts in Belgrade. She left saying, how can I speak about uh, uh, Yugoslav drama in the situation in which Dubrovnik is under siege? Thank you. Thank you. Yen Ting. Actually, this is a very good question, but at the, at the same time, it's very complicated to answer it. Yeah, because from different perspective, for example, from economic, education, culture, even political perspective, we all have a different answer. Yeah, so I would say China or Chinese is a big, very big country, and they are become very powerful from each different perspective situation. Yeah, but uh, for this question, I just want to share recently the phenomenon in Taiwan for young generation, the, the culture and the facial things. For example, uh, maybe Western people use YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. But, uh, for Chinese people, they use the like Weibo, WeChat, or like a small red book. Like this, maybe you are not familiar. But for Taiwanese young generation, they also use this kind of application or social media. So they, it's very interesting. Taiwanese young generation can very easy to get the information from China, from mainland China. But the Chinese people, local Chinese people, can, cannot get the information from local Taiwan situation. So it's like a, you know, it's like a cultural aggressive. Can I say that? I, I'm not sure. But it means so. Actually, Taiwanese young generation is very uh, familiar with recently the Chinese contemporary culture. Yeah, it's not about the political, but it's about like a, like a maybe cultural identity or about the fashion. So it's, it's, be, it's become a risk for, for recently Taiwanese audience because it's, it's like a soft power and it's very sweet and easy to get. But uh, if they, they become it's become like a, like a normal life. Maybe, maybe we are we become the, the the problem. Yeah. So yeah, it's my my sharing. And also, I would like to reply if I can uh, for that um, uh, words about um, that. Uh, mm, uh, for example, uh, Taiwan. Uh, look what is going on in Ukraine and try to understand uh, and, or, and also consider that uh, if Ukraine will fall, next Taiwan or Georgia uh, wait that um, Georgian people wait what uh, will be the result in Ukraine because it is important and influence. Uh, but uh, from the point of view of Ukrainian side, I think that we um, 
try to um, mm, uh, make our voice more stronger uh, to telling this story uh, of uh, colonial uh, um, approach of Russia, uh, telling this different story and uniting our countries and our voices. And do you think that uh, these uh, um, trans-border connections between uh, uh, cultural workers in that countries could be somehow uh, helpful for each of us and uh, try to talk uh, more not from the each of one and wait uh, uh, the result from one country but uh, uh, united now does anyone does anyone want to start uh, hinting yeah I, I'm first yeah because I, I think um, Taiwan and Ukraine for a distance the physical distance is very far. And to be honest, of course, I follow Ukrainian contemporary um, art and also the, the rest of the situation. But uh, for a long term historian background, to be honest, I couldn't say I very understand. Yeah, and I, I know it's very complicated as a foreigner. How can I know about it? So the same situation exchanged to uh, Ukraine people. Do, uh, do you know about Taiwanese situation or Taiwanese history? I think even people follow is this issue. And uh, also maybe Google um, in Wikipedia, you can get some extra information. But uh, is that the, the fact? Is that the true? Is, is we, we couldn't say yes or not. Yeah, so I think so far, the real physical exchange is, is, is very useful and also can have like a real, like a someone face to face or so far the art or culture to have a different, open the, the opportunity and open a different perspective to, to know each other. So I think as a curator, I, what I want to do is I want to create more opportunities to invite different countries, people to solve on art, solve on exhibition, to know or to, to have more opportunity to recognize each other. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm not a teacher. I'm not like a teach someone about his story. I just want to do is open my mind, open people's mind, give everyone opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Um, Tamar, would you like? Okay. Um, yes, um, for sure. Um, I think it is really very important uh, moment now to um, somehow to express the solidarity to the other people. And this cultural exchange or human exchange is um, a very um, important uh, level at the moment. Uh, we have a lot of Ukrainian artists that I already said in Georgia so that uh, we can work with them. but. I also think, and for example, during the architectural biennial, which just finished um, end of October, we saw that our Ukrainian colleagues, how exhausted they are and how burnt out they are because they do whatever they can in their own country. So, for example, we had here Anna Pashinska. She, she is coordinating this project, the Kohati, where they are uh, providing shelters and refurbishing the former um, dormitories of the students for the people who come. They are a um, group of architects and they are working on these projects. And um, not only the human interaction with them was very important, and uh, I really am happy that they came to Georgia, but they also had like three or four days to sleep, to get a normal sleep. And I think we should not forget these kind of things because at the first glance, this is not so obvious, but then you see how uh, how these people are worked out, helping each other, helping themselves. Most of the time, they don't even have time for themselves to recuperate. Um, and I think we need to create each and every opportunity to give them a chance to operate on a normal human level, first of all, and then also to exercise their creative uh, their creative activities. Thank you. Uh, Dion, would you like to add something? Well, I think that this question started with the question of territory. And uh, in a way how uh, 
countries and military generals are uh, uh, speaking about uh, uh, other countries in a terms of territory, it is actually the way in which they are excluding people who are living there. Like it is a huge uh, 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 territory of, a, of an empty land. And it is a really a dangerous situation because everybody who are uh, on that territory are potential targets, right? And in uh, uh, articulating and uh, also uh, speaking about, of course, uh, uh, I think that uh, it is clear not uh, only now during this conference, but also before, how important it is to actually have uh, this, uh, uh, to actually maintain already established networks uh, between various sectors and also in establishing uh, new ones because this is uh, the, the best way how actually you can uh, speak about uh, what is going on in Ukraine, also to uh, reach uh, for the support, but also what I'm thinking about and how I was imagining uh, uh, our residences that I spoke about in Center for Cultural Decontamination, it is actually only to provide for people time and space to think and to heal, not to produce. If they want to, they are welcome. But there are zero expectation in a sense of production, because what I believe that people uh, need now, it is uh, that they start the healing process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tijan. Thank you, Nanting, Tamar, for, for sharing your experience. I would also like to emphasize that each, each one of you mentioned how you are cooperating with Ukrainian artists and culture at this moment, and it is also important that we can stay connected, uh, at least in these artistic practices and in all of the support that you are providing to Ukrainian culture and artists right now. It is very important and it is truly very appreciated. Uh, thank you once again for being with us. Uh, we will be having uh, a small coffee break for 15 minutes and after that we will proceed with three more presentations of international experience. So please grab a coffee and come back here. Thank you. Thank you very much.